shop today and I've got my Z-axis ball bearing block in the lathe here and I'm just uh, running it at about 1500 RPMs until the bearing blocks get tight to the touch and then I'll gradually back it down until it gets cool. I'm just trying to bed these uh, taper roller bearings so that when I install it, I don't have to worry about that later on. All right, so I've got my Z-axis bedded now. I feel really good about that. So next we're going to disassemble the head and mount the new Z-axis ball screw and get that all permanently assembled. All right, guys, well, I've got my Z-axis assembled. I've got it all mounted up on the column there and looks really good. Pretty happy with the way everything turned out. I've got my uh, double diaphragm coupling in there. It uh, really looks good. So we're going to be connecting next our manifold. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just getting it all plumbed in. So a couple things I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to connect all these hoses uh, to the saddle here <clears throat> and then they're going to connect to the linear blocks which I need to remove and then I'm going to have to tap this out to an M5 and put a fitting in here. But right now I'm working on the saddle and I wanted to show you these fittings. Uh, these fittings have this little ferrule on here. And so what you do is you just slide this over the hose, like so. Come here. These are uh, M5, and they're banjo style. So this this part turns. And this has this little uh, a raised area here that should clamp the hose really well. Now it's a little difficult to get it kind of started but once you get it on over there then it it slides over the hose pretty good. And then just slide your nut over and tighten it up. Now these are knurled for hand tightening, but I'm using a pair of needle nose here just to kind of make sure it gets tight. Uh, and then we just screw this on here and then plumb it in. So this one here will go to the top of this bottom block here. This one will go to the top block. The center one will go out to our uh, Z-axis ball nut right back there to that fitting and then uh, this one will go to this linear block and the last one will come up and go to this block I'm trying to give myself a little extra hose just uh, I'm, I want to make sure that I'll be able to uh, plug all this stuff up and still secure it to the rails so trying to give myself a, a good bit of room they have these little o-rings here on the bottom but you can take and wrap some Teflon tape on here which is what I'm doing just for a little extra added bonus Just get a little bit of a uh, Teflon on there. All right. So now that we have all these plumbed in, I need to concentrate on. Uh, 
getting the fittings mounted on my linear blocks. So I'm going to just remove these and see if I can't tap this out to M5 and get some fittings on them. Okay guys, so I've pulled the little set screw out right here. This is where the oil fitting is going to be. I'm using these little M5 barbed fittings. And I'm just going to screw it in here. Now, this is an M4, so what I'm doing is I'm running a tap down in there and just retapping it for M5. This is a little tricky because you want to make sure you get all the debris out of there. You don't want to leave anything stuck in the hole. Another issue is these little hex on the barb fittings here. When you screw them down in there, they kind of hit this seal right here. Okay, so you see how that seal is? So when you screw that in there, it's going to be a little bit too big for the seal. So what I did was, instead of just messing that seal up, I just took them to the lathe and I just turned them down. Let me see if you can get a shot. Uh, can't really see down in there, can we? There we go. A little bit better. Maybe you can see it. And try to get all the debris you can out of there. And uh, yeah, just screw the fitting down in there. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just uh, just took the fittings, turned them down so they're round, and got the hex off there. And that gave me clearance so that I can just screw it on in there. Now whenever you're dealing with these linear blocks, man, it's always tricky because these little keepers come out and your ball, uh, rollers are going everywhere. So be really careful if you're messing with these. And uh, we'll just screw that down and then uh, I'll do the other two blocks and we'll be ready to go ahead and try to put all this together. Alright, so now you can see it just clears the seal there and I don't have to worry about anything. And that works really good. And then the hose will just uh, slide right on the barb there. I, I don't think there's going to be enough pressure to pull these hoses off. Um, and these fittings, I could have used these banjo type fittings, but they're just really big and I didn't want them getting in the way uh, and causing any troubles. I thought this would be a little bit uh, easier. Alright, so I'm going to finish up the other two linear blocks and we'll be ready to start assembly. Alright, well I've got all my hoses plumbed in. I've got some grease shot in here. It worked pretty good. I thought it was going to be a little bit more difficult trying to connect all these things up, but it um, turned out to be alright. I just kind of rested this, uh, propped it up. One, so the blocks wouldn't go all the way down. And two, so this would just lay over. And then I could just uh, reach in there and connect everything up. Alright, so it turned out really well. I'm going to fold this up, bolt all this in. Then I'm going to finish assembling uh, and putting the gearbox head back on uh, and finish this up. Alright guys, well I've got the saddle mounted back on here. I'm going to put the head back on and connect our counterbalance back up. Uh, everything looks pretty good. I wanted to show you the hose routing here. You can kind of see how they're routed in there. That looks really good. And then we've got our hose down here. I'm going to probably put a wire tie right here to wrap it around just to make sure that it doesn't get into the ball screw or rub along this edge inside the column here. Uh, let me see if I can get you a view of that. kind of see how it is there. I don't want it to be uh, rubbing so I'm going to uh, probably just wire tie it up there. But that should be good. Uh, so 
gonna put a wire tie on there and uh, finish getting this uh, head back on here we're gonna get the uh, belt drive and the motor and all hooked up on there all right so I've got the belt drive connected the marathon motor now this is the one and a half horsepower motor that we're going to be going with on the linear rail conversion and I'm going to also be going with a hundred millimeter bore air cylinder I've had this for quite some time and I was going to use it on the original machine however uh, there was not enough spacing for uh, for it to fit up there so I went with an 80 millimeter the benefit of the 100 millimeter is you get the same pounds of force with less air pressure I'm having to run around 150 psi on the 80 millimeter to get the same pressure as I can get with the 100 millimeter at 90 psi or 100 psi so with this sitting up here this is a hundred millimeter you can see now I have a little uh, I'll have a little bit of a clearance it's still going to be tight however I think it's going to work just fine and I can use my California air silent air compressor so in the next video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be machining a new lift plate because the bore, uh, the bolt hole patterns are a little bit different for the 100 millimeter versus the 80 millimeter. But I've got it all mounted. You can see we've got clearance here all around and you can see our z-axis spacer, bearing block, all machined and ready to go. We've got our tapered roller bearings in here. Now I don't have this permanently bolted down because I have to take this off and use a drill to move this up and down right now but uh, once I get everything worked out I can go ahead and permanently secure that. Alright guys so stay tuned for the next video we're going to be machining a new lift plate and then that should finish up the Z column and the Z axis all together and then we can start working on our saddle for the XY. Alright guys, thanks for watching the video. If you're new to my channel and you're just tuning in, click on the subscribe button down here in the bottom right. That way when I post a new video, you'll get a link and if it's something you're interested in, you can stop by and check it out. Thanks for watching guys. Please subscribe and most importantly, be safe.